Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to our service today. Whether you are here or joining us online via Facebook or YouTube, we would like to cordially welcome you to our service today. Let us please stand with for a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for bringing us here today. I thank you, Father God, that you have taken care of us. You've given us everything that we've needed and even more than that. I pray, Father God, that as we go into this service today, I pray, Father God, that you just take control over this place. I pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would just move in this place. And I pray, Father God, that hearts would be touched that people would be filled, that the anointing would just overflow in this arena today. I pray, Father God, that people come here, that they would not be unfulfilled, that you, they, they would receive that which you have today. And I pray, Father God, that everything, Father God, would go in according with your will, that there would be no hiccups, no problems today. And I just pray, Father God, that as everything is happening today, let us have a word today that would fill the hearts of your people and cause us to make impact throughout this world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now let us welcome the praise and worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? And let's just prepare ourselves to be in a mode of worship and uh, yeah just prepare yourself to um, acknowledge the presence of God because the Bible says that when two or more are gathered in his name he shall be in our midst hallelujah amen Very big God. Oh, hallelujah. Have a very big God. 
Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Rababusia mandarabaku saya kandu basu talababus. Ila priba karababus santa libro kolobo santa ya. Thank you, Lord. We lift you high above the earth and the heaven, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will worship you. to sing with me I will 
Lift you high above the earth and the heaven. You are Lord. You are Lord. Yes, you are. Let's take it one more time. I will worship you. Lift you high above the earth and the heaven. I will worship you. Lift you high.
Without you, what would have been said of me if I didn't see your light? Where would have been heard of me if you didn't hold my hand? I want you to hold my hand, Jesus. Now I've come to realize that you are. Seconds. 30 seconds. Who matters most in your life? What matters the most? What is it that takes the priority in your decision? Is it Jesus? We're going to sing that chorus once again. Your all that matters. I want to encourage you, just lift your hands as a sign of surrender and say, God, you're all that matters. Nothing else, nothing else matters, only you. I put you in front. I put you in front. In front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh, yes, Lord. Make room for him. Make room for him. Make room for him. You are my Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll put you in front. I'll put you in front. In front of my melody.
One more time, go away. Everybody lift your voice and say. You're all that matters in our lives, in our families, in our careers, in our ambitions, in everything. You're all that matters. We'll make room for you. We'll make room for you. You and I, Jesus, thank you. The Lord, we exalt. We exalt. We exalt. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we clap for Jesus? Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. He's, he's all that matters. Let's be seated. Amen. I want to read for us from Matthew 26, starting from verse 26. The other day, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. In my tradition, we observe Holy Communion every month, the first Sunday of the month. And it's a privilege to partake of this together. The bread represents the body of Christ and the blood, the cup represents his blood. I want to call the leaders to come forward. And one of the things we do here, we operate open communion, which means uh, if you have given your life to Jesus, you're welcome to partake. Um, whether you're a member or not, we believe in the universal church. Hallelujah. Amen. When you receive this, just hold on to it. Sing along. Pray along. You can also go ahead to open the first layer to assess the bread as we partake together. Open the first layer to assess the bread as you partake shortly. 
Thank him. Thank him for the blood. Give him praise. Just open your mouth and thank Jesus. Thank Him for the broken body. Thank Him for the blood. Just give Him thanks. If not for Him, we wouldn't be here. We are here only because of His broken body and for His blood. We are here only because of Him. Just give Him praise. Appreciate Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank him. He paid it all. He paid it all. He paid it for us, for you. He paid it for me. Jesus was so grateful that your body was broken for us. Thank you. For by your broken body, we are made whole. Thank you for the broken body, your church, that you have redeemed. Thank you. And the Bible said that night, he lifted up the bread. He blessed it, gave thanks. I said, this is my body broken for you. Let us partake together of the bread. Go ahead and open the second layer to assess the cup. The cup represents the blood of Jesus. It represents the blood of the new covenant. The blood that was shed for you and for me. The blood that brings cleansing, redemption. And it's by the blood that we have access to the Father. We have fellowship. By the blood we have fellowship. And it's a privilege. Jesus, thank you so much for shedding your blood for us. Right from Gethsemane. I will say you sweated drops of blood through the, the crown of thorn, through the beatings on the cross with the arrows by your side. For us, you poured the blood. And we're so grateful. We are meant to die, but we are alive because you took our penalty. Thank you. And the Bible said that night he lifted up the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Shed for the remission of sin. Let us put it together of the cup.
You can go ahead and pass it to the ash. The ushers will pick up the cup as we continue with the rest of the service. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. He washes my ass. For the blood. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, thank you. Amen. Before we go into the word, just a very quick uh, important announcement. Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating 15 years anniversary. Is somebody excited? Is somebody excited? Is somebody excited? Amen. So next Sunday, come in your best dress. Come in your best dancing shoe. And come with empty stomach. Is somebody hearing me? We are going to celebrate. Celebrate in African way. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Amen. 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 I'd like you to help me just welcome people around you. Give someone an able shake. Hallelujah. Tell them welcome to church. Welcome to church. Let them know you look good. Look at them and say you look good. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone in this house is wonderfully and fearfully made by God. Look at them and say you look like your father in heaven. Amen. He has made us in his image. And after his likeness. Amen. Amen. Please open your Bible with me to First Chronicle chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Now, these two verses at the end of this series, many of you should have memorized it. Amen. Because we keep reading it over and over. We have it on the screen as well. I'd like us to read together at the count of three. One to go. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Mm. Father, we thank you so much for the entrance of your word that gives life and understanding to the simple. God, we come in simplicity of heart to receive your word. May your word transform us. 
May your word transform us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as I read this, something just jumped at me. The Bible said, the mother of Jabesh gave birth to Jabesh and called him a name, saying, that's in verse 9. And then in verse 10, the Bible says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel towards the end of that verse and said what? Saying. Somebody say saying. Say, what you say is crucial. His mother said one thing, and Jabez reversed what was said by what he said. Say with me, I will say the right things. It is crucial that you develop a habit of saying what God has said, not what other people have said. Because life is in the mouth. Life and death, they are in the mouth. And what you say matters. His mother gave birth to him, gave him a name, saying, this is the reason. But one thing that happened, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, and I pray may God give you a voice that will counteract every wrong voices. You know, it's easy for people to tell you, why are you in that place? It's a dry land. And before you know it, you begin to receive what they are saying. Every word is prophetic. But you must be able to position yourself and declare what God says. The Bible says, where the soul of your feet shall touch, God will give you as your what? Your inheritance. You should be able to stand on the promises of God regardless of what you see and what people are saying. The news can be contrary. The fast can be there. That something is factual doesn't make it truthful. Oh, God. That something is factual doesn't make it truthful. It was a fact that Jabez's mom experienced pain. We don't know the level of pain. We don't know exactly what happened. Childbearing is painful. But there was something more than just childbearing that the mother experienced that after that she decided to give him a name. That was factual. Because of the fact that she experienced, she was able to speak into the life of the child. And those words carry life. And through the journey of Jabez, he began to experience pain after pain. To the point he said, no, 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 I cannot continue this way. And he has to reverse what was said with his words. I don't know who this is for. People have spoken over your life for years. It's time for you to reverse them. You do not need any special man of God to reverse it. As a believer, you have access to the throne of grace. And when you speak what God has said, God will bring it into alignment. Say with me, I will speak the truth. Regardless of the facts. So the fact could be nobody gets married in your family. But that's not the truth. The fact could be every person experiences heart attack in your family. But that's not the truth. The fact could be nobody is succeeding, you know, in business, in their career, but that's not the truth. The fact could be no one is getting saved in your home, but that's not the truth. 
The fact could be you're struggling in your journey with God, but that's not the truth. The word of God is the truth. Speak the truth. Leave the facts. The fact could be the way they treat people from your part of the world is different, but that's not the truth. The truth is you are a child of God. Your citizenship is from heaven. You are a representing, you are representing a kingdom that is bigger than any kingdom. Not just representing the kingdom, you are an ambassador with authority to speak on behalf of the kingdom. Say with me, I will say the truth. So last week, we were able to look at this prayer of Jabesh. A very simple prayer. He prayed that God will enlarge me. It was a one-sentence prayer with several segments. I wonder if segment we looked at last week. God will enlarge me. We didn't finish it. We're going to conclude it today by the grace of God. And it's very interesting for us to understand that in this year is our year of what? Our year of enlargement. Your enlargement doesn't come when you keep quiet. Your enlargement doesn't come when you do nothing. God is sovereign. God is in charge. God rules over the affairs of men. But you have a responsibility. Say with me, I have a responsibility. And one of the key things is what you say. We're going to look at other things today. He prayed this simple prayer and God answered him. And last week we established that first and foremost you must put God's agenda first. Somebody say with me, God's agenda. Enlargement is not about you becoming famous. It's about the kingdom of God and about the agenda of God. And when you understand that, your perspective changes. Putting God first is what matters. But we say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his word, righteousness. And all these other things shall be what? added unto you. Stop chasing after things. Say, I will stop chasing after things. The psalmist said, goodness and mercy shall follow me. May you be a magnet of goodness. May you be a magnet of favor. May you be a magnet of mercy. That wherever you go, goodness and mercy shall follow you. If you look at the life of Joseph, it was so evident. When they sold him as a slave, he was ruling. They put him in prison, he was ruling. They put him in the palace, he was ruling. There was something he carried. That regardless of where you put him, he will rule. May you rule wherever you go. May you experience favor wherever you go. May you flourish wherever you go. The people can be saying, it's hard to make it in China. No, 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 no. They don't know what you carry. People can be saying, it's hard to make it in, in this country, in Africa. No, they don't know what you carry. See, where you're going is not dependent on where you are. It's a function of what you carry. Even if they put Joseph in the desert, he will flourish. Are you hearing me? If you put him in a place, you know, there was this you know, drawing I saw, a cartoon. Somebody said, he said, people throw stones at you, don't throw back. Build an empire. When you carry God and his presence, even when people hate you, their hatred will propel you.
Because God uses everything. Bible said, all things, all things work it together. All things. All things work it together. So you must put God's agenda first. Say, I'll put God's agenda first. Put God first. That's how you enlarge. Secondly, you must learn to make both requests. Say, I will make bold requests. Learn to make bold requests. Make impossible requests. Don't insult God with your small dreams. God is looking for men and women who can transform their generation. God is looking for men and women who can take over. There is already a transfer of wealth from the Gentiles to the men and women of God. There is already a transfer happening. Are you ready to position yourself? Make bold requests. Making bold requests is not about having a big house and a big car. Those things are what I call jara extra. Hallelujah. It's about impacting lives and changing lives. The kingdom of God is about lives, not about things. The said the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. It's not about things. It's about lives that are impacted. When we live here, the only thing that will count are the people you impacted. The souls you changed. Not the number of houses you have. When you go, they will be here. Have you seen somebody traveling with all their houses? No, you cannot. They will be here. But the lives you impacted, the people you change, the people you want to the kingdom, the people that you change their circumstances, they will always be remembered. And there is a record for you in heaven over the lives you have impacted. Say with me, I will make impact. Make both requests. Both requests. And God can do it. Today we're going to continue. But if you're going to enlarge, you must depend on the Holy Spirit. Say with me, I will depend on the Holy Spirit. You must learn to depend on the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it on your own. If your dream is bigger than you, it means you cannot do it on your own. It can only be God who can help you. You must learn to depend on the Holy Spirit. And Jebus understood that it's only God who can help me. He didn't go looking for people. He didn't go looking for, you know, his friends. The Bible said this. You see, he was called pain. He was experiencing pain. Perhaps his brothers were doing well. To understand. He didn't go looking for them. How did you make it? How are you? How, how is your life different from my life? How can you help me? No, 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 no. He went to the source. Somebody said the source. He went to God himself and he called upon God. And the Bible says, God granted his request. May God grant your request. May God answer your prayers. May God come for you. He called upon God and God answered him. I love what Zachariah said. Say, not by mind, not by power, but by the Spirit. Not by mind, not by power, but by the Spirit. Not by your wisdom, but by the Spirit. Not by your strength, by the Spirit, 
not by your intellect, but by the Spirit. Not by your persuasive argument, but by the Spirit. Not by your skill set, not by your talent, but by the Spirit. Not by your connections, but by the Spirit. Not by the people you know, but by the Spirit. Not by your past experiences, but by the Spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Most High God. Only the Spirit of God can enable you. Only the Spirit of God can empower you. Only the Spirit of God can help you. Only the Spirit of God can give you insight. Only the Spirit of God can order your steps. Only the Spirit of God can take you to where you're going. You do not know tomorrow. There is a God who has seen tomorrow. There is a God who is in charge of the universe. And that God, 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 Sing it aloud to God. No bamait, yeah, masakaya ba. Repo only by His Spirit, only by His Spirit. No bamait, repo seketele bos kaya ba. Only the Holy Spirit can help you. Only His Spirit, only His Spirit. No bamait, yeah, no bamait. By your spirit, God, by your spirit. No, my mind. No, my mind. Oh, send your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Only by his spirit. Only by his spirit. Only by his spirit. Only his spirit can help you. Holy Spirit, you must live a life of total dependence on the Spirit. You must live a life that God is only you. Without you, no, 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 only you. Only you can help me. Only you can order my steps. The Bible said the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Only God can order your step in the right places to go. Only God can grant you the insight on what to do next. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Every day you wake up, say, God, fill me afresh. Fill me afresh. Fill me afresh. More of you, less of me. Overtake me. Envelop me. Overflow through me. May people I meet today know that I carry something. May the people I see in the office, may they know that I carry the Holy Spirit. May the people I see in my business, may they know that I carry the Holy Spirit. That divinity is living in this humanity. That I'm here as the light of the kingdom, the light of the world. Dependent on the Holy Spirit. The beautiful thing is that he's more willing to help you than you need him. <laughs> he's more willing, more determined to help you. And my prayer is that God will do something in your prayer life. In this season, I pray that God will do something in your prayer life. I prophesy over somebody, your prayer life is changing completely. 
Your time with God is changing completely. Your secret place is changing completely. That when you start to be with God, something begins to happen. And you know, and you know, and you know that you have encountered God in this secret place. That you will know, and you will know that God has touched you. That when you come at people will know because there is a glow on your face. In the realm of the spirit, there is a level of fire you carry that no devil can come around you, no demon can come around you, no enemy can come around you because there is something happening in you already. There is something very special taking place in your life that I should step out, I should step out. Everyone we know that you have been with your father. As you step out, people we know that you have spent time with God because something has taken place inside of you and you're working on a new level. It seems as if you're working, but you're floating. In the realm of the spirit, you're floating. You're operating on a new dimension entirely because you are so dependent on the Holy Spirit and you come out drunk. Oh, somebody will get drunk in the spirit. You come out drunk in the spirit. Have you seen a man who is drunk? He cannot control his steps. He cannot control his senses. He cannot control his decisions. The thing inside is in control. Control. Said Holy Spirit. I depend on you. That's what he wants to do. He wants to enlarge you spiritually, enlarge your capacity. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. The pleasure you're looking for is in his presence. The joy you're looking for is in his presence. The Bible says there is fullness of joy in his presence. And at his right hand, there is joy. Joy forevermore. Joy in his presence. When you experience his presence, you cannot trade it with anything. You cannot trade it. Nothing will satisfy. Nothing. And that's my prayer for you. That you experience the presence of God so much. That he becomes all that matters. Becomes all that matters. Moses experienced the presence of God so much. He got to a point, God told him, I will send an angel to go with you because of the people you're walking along with. If I go with you, I might kill all of them. But if I send an angel, he will get you there. You will achieve where you're going. You will get to the destination. You, you will get to the land flowing with milk and honey, but an angel will go, not me, not my presence. He had a choice. Go with the angel and get to the destination. Achieve the goal and the mission and achieve the assignment and keep everyone safe. Or go with the presence of God and maybe they will not get there. He said, if your presence doesn't go with us, we will not leave this place. I've tested your presence. I've tested your presence and it's different. And I pray that God will grant you a fresh revelation of his presence. A fresh encounter of his presence. That you can say nothing else matters. Not it matters. 
Because in him, everything is there. In him, everything is there. Nothing else matters. You can declare, I'll make room for you. That can become your life song. I make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I put you in front. I put you in front. In front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. You are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, you're all only you matters, only you, only you, only you, only you. Mm. I live filling my spirit. <laughs> Many people here, God has given you vision. A vision you can sense that it seems bigger than you. But you're really worried about the provision. How God will make it happen. I have a word for you. God said, I will provide. Everything you need to do that assignment, I will provide. Not only I will provide, I will provide more than what you need. Oh, I will provide more than what you need for the assignment. For every vision, there is a provision. Don't allow your current situation to limit your vision. You have already begun to scale down. No, God said, no, it's not time to scale down. It's time to scale up. Because I'm about to surprise you with the resources of heaven. I'm about to provide for you more than you can ever ask. I'm about to blow your mind with the resources of vision. Because for that vision, I have a provision for the vision. And I will supply all your needs according to my riches i will supply everything you need according to the resources of heaven for every vision there is a provision provision always follow vision Don't define your vision by the provision you have. Allow God to define your vision. Let it be a God-sized vision. And I can guarantee you heaven will provide for that vision. He will provide the manpower, the connection, the money, everything needed to make it happen. He will Say with me, I will not scale down. I will scale up. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust him with all your heart. Lead not in your own understanding. In all your ways, in all that you do, acknowledge him, acknowledge him. Understand he is the owner. Acknowledge him. What will happen? He will direct your path. I see God directing somebody's path today. God bringing the right connection your way. God bringing you into alignment with the people that you need to walk with.
Thank you, Jesus. You must understand this. Compelling vision always attracts provision. How compelling is your vision? It must be bigger than you. Tom Maxwell said it's a myth that one person can achieve anything great. You need people. It cannot be done by you alone. And God is bringing those people. Your path are going to cross. Before the end of this year, your path will cross. I don't know, it just came to me. I don't know who that is for. Before the end of this year, your path will cross with the people you need to work with. And you're going to begin to see results. You're going to begin to see results. Your path will cross. God just dropped it in my heart. God is going to order your steps and your path will cross with the people you need to work with. And you are going to begin to see results. You're going to begin to say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Thank you. Trust in him. Allow him. Allow him. And finally, for God to enlarge your territory, your influence, you must learn to invest in your growth. Say with me, I will invest in myself. The biggest investment you can do is in you. I don't know who this is for. You have been limited for too long because you didn't go to school. God is removing that limit. But you must take a step of faith to enroll. Even if it's online school, whatever you can find, it's going to open new doors for you. Someone once said, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. It may look expensive right now, but it's the best investment you can do for your future. Invest in yourself. See, Jabez prayed for blessing. He prayed for enlargement. He didn't just stop at his prayers. If you look at Jewish writings about the life of Jabez, you'd be really surprised. Jabez grew to be an eminent professor. He became an expert in the law. He had, he had a reputation. He was so good, he, he grew in his capacity. Which tells me he invested in himself. He, he became an eminent professor, a scribe. Now other professors gathered around him. Other scribes, they came and gathered around him. People left where they were. They left their cities to move to where Jabez was living. He grew to be an eminent, an authority. And the law is cried. He invested in himself. Say, I will invest in myself. He invested. Is God calling you for leadership? The question I have for you, how many books on leadership have you read? 
Is he calling you into business? How many books in business have you read? Is he calling you into ministry? How many ministers of God are you following? Which books are you reading? Where is God? Is God calling you into NGO? How many people that you know have done well in that area are you following? What are you learning? What are you learning? How are you equipping yourself? How are you equipping yourself? Do you sense that is the, the healing power of God over your life? You sense that God has given you gifts, you know, to heal the sick. How many people do you know who operate in those gifts? Are you following? Like begets like. Who you follow will determine who you be tomorrow. If you show me the books you're reading and the people you're following, I can tell you where you'll be in five years' time. How are you investing in your life? What are you doing about the vision? How are you equipping yourself around that vision? How are you getting yourself ready for where he's taking you to? Jabez grew so much in his capacity. An eminent professor, a scribe. The Bible said that, you know, there were other scribes started coming to where he was to the point that the place Jabez was living was now renamed the city of Jabez. What are you doing? If you look at First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, the Bible said, and the families of the scribes who dwelt at where? Jabez. These are people from different tribes. They left their tribes. They came and lived in the city of Jabez. Because he was an eminent scholar. He invested in himself. He did something. It is one thing to pray. It's another thing to do something. Say with me, I will do something. Say, I will invest in myself. The investment you make in your life today may look expensive. In 10 years' time, you'll be happy you did. Are you hearing me? Are you a teacher? You have vision of running a school. What are you learning about running schools? You have a vision about doing NGOs, running orphanages all across your nation. What are you learning about running orphanages? Who do you know that is doing that, that you can tap into their experience? So I like to read books. I was sharing with the leaders just last week. So when you read a book by an author, you have condensed what they learn in 10 years or 20 years within a few hours. It's like you're allowing them to mentor you from afar. You're learning from their experiences, their successes, their failures. And you're being better equipped to do what God is calling you. I want you to know this. Readers are leaders. Readers are 
leaders. If you must lead, you must read. Most times, we don't like to read. They have the last book you read is Facebook. You feel God is calling you into business to be an entrepreneur, to be a kingdom wealth manager. You know all the movies, all the soap operas, all the shows. If you watch news, it's only CNN. People who are called to be commanders of wealth don't waste their time with soap operas. They watch Bloomberg. They watch, they, they, they know the channels they watch. You need to be informed to make the right decisions. If you're not informed, you'll be deformed. It's as simple as that. Someone once said, if you want to hide things, From a particular group of people, put them in books. I wouldn't say which people. Glory be to God. May we change that story. Say, I will equip myself. Our vision this year, our year of enlargement from Isaiah. Isaiah declares, say, enlarge your house. Build an addition. Even if you don't have the people, build an addition. Because they are coming. Begin to equip yourself. Invest in you. Be ready. When the opportunity arrives, you're there, you're ready. Hello? Say, I will invest in myself. I want to tell you there are always opportunities in life. All around you, there are opportunities. The difference between someone who is successful and someone who is not is the successful person was ready for the opportunity. They were prepared. They were ready. Glory be to God. Not only we can be ready, we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit word advantage. Imagine you are prepared and you have the Holy Spirit. Which opportunity will you miss? None. Amen. Say, I will be prepared. I like the way Mrs. Translation put it. It's a clear loss of ground for your tent. It's just clear the grasses. <laughs> Make a large tent. Spread out. In this year of enlargement, although we have three months to go, you can still make your tent bigger. Are you with me? You can still invest in yourself. You are in an industry and you sense that that industry is not moving forward. What is keeping you from beginning to think differently? And begin to seek opportunities in other areas. I don't know who this is for. I left you for somebody. It's time for you to change your industry. I don't know. It's 
time. Don't just stay there. Look around and trust God for great things. I'm going to just conclude with this message from Paul to the church in Corinth as he spoke to them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15, Paul said this. He said, we do not boast beyond the limits in the level of others, but our hope is that as your faith increases, somebody say faith increases. As your faith increases, it is crucial for your faith to increase. As your faith increases, our area of influence among you may be greatly enlarged. And I declare, may your area of influence over people may you be greatly enlarged. May your area of influence in your school may it be greatly enlarged. May your area of influence at work may it be greatly enlarged. May your area of influence in your family, may it be greatly enlarged. May your area of influence in business, may it be greatly enlarged. Say, so as your faith increases, and I pray that God will increase your faith. God will take your faith to a new level entirely. That you will believe God for the impossible. And you can make bold requests. May your past never limit your tomorrow. Your past. Your past is past. I can guarantee you, you can't change what happened yesterday. You can't change what happened five years ago. You can't change what happened 10 years ago. Your past has gone. Stop dwelling in your past. The mistakes of yesteryears, they have gone. You are a new person in Christ. In God, he has started afresh with you. Focus on him today. And trust him for tomorrow. Trust him tomorrow. I'd like us to all bow our heads. Paul says, as your faith increases, your faith can only increase when you have faith. I want to pray. For anyone in this room or watching online. Your walk with God is shaky. Perhaps you don't know him at all. Or you have moved far away from him. You are not in control of your life. God cannot enlarge you. It is for the children of God. I want you to pray for yourself. Just open your mouth and ask God to forgive you. Open your mouth and ask God to have mercy. That any way you sinned against him, that he should have mercy. He should forgive you. He should cleanse you. And he can do it. He wants to do it. That's the God we serve. He wants to do it. Not only he can do it, he wants to do it. Ask God to come into your life, to be in charge, and to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for as many that are making their commitment with you. Lord, I pray may you forgive, may you cleanse, may you renew. Oh, God of heaven, I just pray for everyone, Lord. But then we just surrender completely to you. 
We surrender completely to you. And I pray may God give you the grace. He will give you the strength for trusting. He will give you the strength to obey him. To live with him. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what you need to surrender to him. You know yourself. What area of your life do you need to surrender to him? What area of your life do you need to trust him the more? Now you can say, God, I freely give this life. I surrender. I thought it belongs to you. I'm just coming back home to where I belong. My mouth cannot lead me astray. I'm making a change. I'm making a change. Father, we surrender all to you. May you be in charge. May you take absolute control. Take absolute control of our lives, of our dreams, of our visions, of our career, of our ambitions, our families, our studies, our businesses, our lives. We surrender all. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we all stand? Let's clap unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you made a commitment to follow Jesus, we encourage you. Send us a message. Send us an email. We'd like to work with you. And if you're here, see the ushers or any of the leaders before you go. You know, last week, you know, God interrupted the service. I love God. Hallelujah. He's in charge. Amen. And one of the messages he gave us was that this today is going to enlarge people financially. And one thing that happens when God gives you a vision, he will provide for the vision. And everything you need to make that vision happen will be made available. We're going to pray. We're going to pray a couple of prayers. One thing I would like you to do, we're going to sing this song, Baba. Here in your presence, let it rain. Amen? Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Here in your presence. Let us just sing that together. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it fall on me. The same God. We're in your presence. Lord, I'm in your presence. Let it rain. Let it rain. Cause your rain. Cause your rain. Cause your rain. 
Can you raise up your two hands unto heaven? To receive. There is a release. There is a release. The floodgates of heaven. The floodgates of heaven are open. There is a release of financial resources in this place. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open the floodgates, Lord. Open the floodgates. Cause your rain. Cause your rain. Cause your rain. Cause your rain. going to sing that song once more. I want to read this scripture to us in Deuteronomy 28 verse 8. The Lord said, the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. The Lord will command the blessing on you. It's a command from heaven. The Lord will command his blessings on you and on your storehouses. Begin to pray for yourself. God, my storehouse, command your blessings. In my bank account, command your blessings. In my investments, command your blessings. In my businesses, command your blessings. Command your blessings. Command your blessings. Hey, Rakabaya. Legebo. Megedebo Sakayaba. There is a release of financial resources. Rebo Sekete. Begin to pray for yourself. Makayaba. Oh God. La mama son telebos kayaba. Re makayaba. Hey, say I will command my blessings. I will command my blessings. Re kebosaka. Maganda la bos sekete. Oh, makayaba. In your small houses, I will command my blessings. In your small houses, I will command my blessings. Re kebosaka. There is a command. Baba Masaka, Yalapa. going to sing that song again. Let me read again. Just from this verse. He said, he's blessing on your storehouses and in all which you lay your hand upon. God said, I will command blessing on what you lay your hands upon. I would like you to pray that prayer for yourself. That whatever I lay my hand upon, oh, my family shall be blessed. As I lay my hands on my children, they shall be blessed. As I lay my hands on my businesses, they shall be blessed. As I lay my hand on my work, they shall be blessed. As I lay my hand on my CV, they shall be blessed. Begin to pray for yourself. God said, I will command my blessing. I will command my blessing on what you lay your hands upon. Repo Sakatayaba. Reketepo. Malapasaka. Repo Skedebo Santayaba. Lekete. 
Makatayapa. Hey, Master Labon. The floodgates of heavens are open. Hey. There is a release. There is a release. Ribo seketelebos kayaba. Mabama sokote lagaba. Malebo senteleboska. Reke delebo. Hey, masin teleboska. Oh God, bless the work hands. Bless the work of hands of your people. Bless the work of hands of your people. Hey, bless their jobs. Bless their jobs. Bless their businesses. Bless, bless their companies. I want you to just declare with me, declare with me, my hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. Declare, declare. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. Palma, begin to pray over your hands. Begin to pray over your hands. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. Hey, Makata, Labo Sekete, my hands are blessed. Rike Bose Telebo, receive, receive the touch of God upon your hands. Maseke Teleba Sakayaba. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to sing that song once again. You see, the floodgates of heavens are open already, and God is pouring out a blessing. I'm going to read for us this same verse, the last part of it. And God said, he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. I want you to know God will bless you in this land. Amen. I want to declare God will bless you in this land. Amen. You will not go out of this land empty-handed. God will bless you in this land. Amen. In this land, you will experience prosperity. Amen. In this land, you will experience the favor of God. Amen. In this land, you will flourish Amen. like a palm tree. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray. In this land, in this land, I will do well. Let's sing that song again. Begin to pray for yourself. In this land, Reke Pomasaya. La pa sokete, repo sekete. Hey, the soul of my feet is on this land already. Hey, my feet are on this land already. Reke pama, mabo sente lebo skaya ba. Melekede, la bo se, reke lebo skaya. Malasu kete, repo sente lebo ska. Hey. The floodgates are open. They are open already. They are open already. Declare in this land, in this land. Hey, Rebo Sekete Laba. Menekete Yaba. Lege de Bosca. Hey, Rakayaba. Cause you are ready. Cause you to fall. Let it fall. Lava. Wherever you are, wherever you are, God is committed. You will not be a disgrace. You will not be a disgrace. You will not be a mockery. Hey, your enemies will not mock you. Hey, your enemies will not mock you. In this life, I shall be blessed. In this land, I shall enlarge. Make it to your Make my soul get it. Oh, Baba. Oh, Baba. Baba. Reke de basa kayaba.
So what God will do in your life is not restricted by your location. When people are saying there is a casting down, you shall declare there is a lifting up. Is somebody with me? You shall declare there is a lifting up. When people are saying there is famine, you shall be declaring there is fruitfulness. Is somebody hearing me? I want you to just speak over your life and over your family. Hey, in this land, in this land, begin to pray, begin to pray. In this land, you shall declare there is a lifting up. In this land, you shall declare there is fruitfulness. In this land, you shall declare that the windows of heaven are open unto you. In this land, in this land, you shall declare that you are blessed. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. That will be your testimony. That will be your testimony. Riposekete Makalaba. That will be your testimony. 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 Reke Pose Telebo. Reke de Posekete. Rebasaka. Lambayaba. Rekaba Masakaya Baba. Mendeles Kayaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. He won't. Oh, too faithful to disappoint me. He cannot disappoint you. He cannot disappoint you. You've proven yourself over and over in my life. He has proved it. And I've come to realize that you, you are, are too faithful, faithful to, to fail me. me. Let's sing that together. You're too faithful to fail me, Lord. You're too faithful to fail me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to me alive. You're too faithful to fail me. God is too faithful to fail. You are who yes. yesterday. He's too faithful to fail. Is the God yesterday? The same yesterday. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What you say is what you will do. You never fail. Oh, thank you, Lord. Are you ready to worship him? Are you ready to worship him? Lift up your hands and worship. Oh, yes, Lord. Worship, worship him. Worship him. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful, Lord. Hey. You're too faithful to disappoint.
Father, you're too faithful. You have never failed, and you will never fail. We we'll bless your name. You're too faithful to disappoint. You have shown it over and over. Even at the last minute, you showed up. At the last minute, you showed up. You are the God of last minute. When all hope was lost, you showed up. When there was no way, you made the way. Oh Lord, you're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to forsake me. You're too faithful to abandon me. You're too faithful to forget me. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. I want you to just think about your life. God has been faithful in so many ways. Look back over the years. He has been faithful every time. Every time. I want us to sing that song again. You're too faithful to fail me. This is a prophetic word for somebody in this room. It's a prophetic word for somebody in this room. I want you to tap into it. God is too faithful. Makalaba. Reka Masaya. Reposa. What he said, he will do it. Don't give up. Don't give up. He will do it. He has never failed. He's never failed. And he has never changed. He never changed. Hey. You are faithful to, to the end. end. Faithful. Can somebody worship him? Worship him because he's too faithful to fail. I worship you. Hey, thank you, Lord. You're too faithful to fail me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You will not be mocked. Your enemies will not mock you. Hey. Oh, Jesus. You're too faithful, Lord. You're too faithful. You're too loving to fail me. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. No doubt that he loves you. He cannot leave you halfway. He who started that work in you, he will bring you to an end. No devil can stop it. No person can stop it. Or to love me to leave me. Why don't you say you're too committed? You're too committed to leave me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're too committed to leave me halfway. Thank you, Jesus. He cannot leave you halfway. He cannot leave you halfway. He will not live here for it. He will not live here for it. Come to realize you're too committed to fail me. Just lift up your hands and begin to appreciate God. Just give God praise. He's too committed to leave you halfway. He's too loving to abandon you. He's too faithful to fail you. What he started, he will do. Just give him praise. Thank him in advance for what he will do. Give him praise for what he will do. Thank him in advance. Thank him in advance. Give him all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you so much. You are too faithful, too loving, too committed. Even when we are faithless, you remain it faithful. Thank you. Thank you. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. Receive all the praise. Thank you for enlarging your people. Thank you for all you are doing and what you continue to do. May you alone be glorified. May you alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Can we clap unto Jesus? Hallelujah. As you take your seat, clap unto Jesus. He is the King of Kings and He is committed. Thank you, Pastor, for that wonderful word. Now, before I go into our normal, uh, our normal announcements, I have one special announcement that we do every three months. It's our, our third season of our Bible reading competition has finished, and now it's time to award the prizes. Now, for third place, they won first place the last time, but this time is third place. Would be our Jesus Warriors. Can you come forward, please? In second place. Overcomers. <laughs> now, first place. This one, not just cookies. I encourage you. Now remember, in three months, we will do this again. Okay. I hope you're the first group to win it twice. But if you don't, it will come back, and we'll give it to another group. Okay. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. If you, are, if you are not in one of our community groups, please um, see myself or one of the ushers to join. I encourage you to join so that you can be involved in what is going on. Now, is there anyone here who is with us for the very first time? Uh, come here and I would like to, to welcome you. So if there's anyone here who's here for the very first time, please stand. Okay, we would like to welcome you to our church, and we pray that you would find this a very good church to belong to. At the end of service, come to my right-hand side over here, and someone will be here to welcome you and give you further um, instruction. Now, is there anyone here that this is their last Sunday? You've been here with us for some time, and you're going back to your um, original place. Uh, hmm. Let us stretch out our hands and let us just pray blessings over her. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this woman. I pray, Father God, that you would just bless her, keep her, Father God, wherever she's going. I pray, Father God, that you would just be a great influence through her so she can impact the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Blessing time. Blessing time. As God, as, as Pastor has just said, financial blessings can come, but you also have to have a giving heart as well, okay? I, let us pray for the offering. Thank you, Father God, for this offering, and I pray, Father God, that as people are preparing to give, Father God, I pray, Father God, that you would just um, put them into the right heart, and I pray, Father God, for these things that will be collected, that the that the church would use them to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Uh, one very important announcement. I announced it earlier on uh, before the sermon. Next Sunday is our 15 years anniversary celebration. And COVID-19 will not stop us from celebrating. Are you hearing me? So next Sunday, one of the things I like to do, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't come alone. Bring someone with you. Amen? And come in your best dress. Come with your dancing shoe. And come with empty stomach. Amen. I know some people will start fasting on Saturday. Amen. 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 And the way we're going to do it, we're going to cook all kinds of food. Different varieties of food. Amen. So if you would like to participate in cooking food, see my wife. Amen. Will give you the money needed. Hallelujah. We're going to eat all kinds of food. Is somebody ready? Is somebody ready? Are you coming next week? Amen. Amen. And secondly, if you need prayers after the service, the elders will be at my right. Just come and meet any of them and we'll agree with you in prayer. Can we all stand? Let us all stand. I'd like you to just appreciate God for today. Give God praise. Give God praise for today. For all that he has done. He has done marvelous things. He has done glorious things. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we're so grateful for all you've done. And Lord, I pray for every person in this room and the people who are watching online. May the enlargement you've done today remain permanent. Is there anyone that is struggling financially? May today be a turnaround in their life. May heavens provide for them. Thank you. Oh Lord, we pray. May you help us to cherish your presence. That we will not trade it for anything. May you make us men and women of your presence. May we be hungry for you. And may we not be too busy for you. Father, we also pray. Give us the grace to invest in ourselves. May we be better in all that we do. May we strive for excellence. And may our light shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. May our generation be impacted by us. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Father, I pray for your people this week. May your angels go ahead of them. I cover everyone who is hearing me right now. May the blood of Jesus cover you completely. Every arrow of the enemy against you, I destroy them completely. And I pray may angels minister unto you. May God give you a testimony. May God give you a breakthrough. Thank you, Daddy. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints say, and all the saints say, and all the saints say, let us share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.
Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Worship team will give us some celebration song. Hallelujah. Go ahead and enjoy it. If you need prayers, go by my right. The elders should be here to pray with you. Yeah. 